The first two episodes of Ahsoka dropped just a few days ago, and right now, this moment, we are the most polarized we have been in Star Wars fandom since The Last Jedi. Let's look at it. Let's say this right out of the gate. Star Wars is in a terrible place, and there's only one reason for that. That is because of Lucasfilm and Disney, period. So when Ahsoka dropped on August 23rd, it was already behind the eight ball. And even though this is Dave Filoni's first time doing a live action series himself, many fans just aren't that excited about it. So the two episodes dropped. Personally, I gave the first two episodes a seven. That's the highest rating of anything Star Wars I've given in a long time. And my partner here at the channel, Nick, scored it a 5. And in our review, we saw that once I gave it a 7, people are saying that I'm a shill and what's wrong with me. And conversely to that, people were attacking Nick because he only gave it a 5. What's wrong with you? And that's fine to disagree. If my opinion's different than yours, let's have the conversation. I think that's awesome. And we've seen your comments, but let's see what the media is saying about Ahsoka. How are they reporting on this show And this is going to tell us a lot about the state of Star Wars. Up first from The Ringer, can Ahsoka be the fulcrum of the Star Wars franchise? And what that means, of course, is that a fulcrum is a resting place. Can this offer a little bit of stability to the Star Wars franchise? After two episodes, it does not seem that is the case. Dave Filoni is certainly going to have to bring it to actually be a fulcrum in the Star Wars fandom. From The Guardian, Ahsoka Review. More bad Star Wars in a galaxy too far away to care about. I was actually a little surprised that Guardian came out and ripped Ahsoka the way that it did. I know that a lot of fans were happy to see the Guardian do that. But personally, to me, I feel like maybe they're off base a little bit. I I don't know. Screen Rant reports mixed Ahsoka reviews drop its Rotten Tomato score below all seasons of The Mandalorian. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a lie. Rotten Tomatoes did not drop the score below Mandalorian Season 3. Mandalorian Season 3 is lower than Ahsoka every day and twice on Sunday. The Hollywood Reporter says Ahsoka Review, Disney Plus's fluffy new Star Wars series starring Rosario Dawson, is the anti-Andor. What does that even mean? The anti-Andor? Are you saying that Andor was excellent and this show is not good? Well, I disagree. Andor moved basically at a snail's pace the first two episodes to me, were painful to watch. The series definitely got better after the first two episodes, but it was a snooze fest on opening night that I got to watch at 2 a.m. Actually, we got action in Ahsoka. We got lightsaber fights. We got chases in space. There was a lot of good action. Now, did it move slow? Yes, for sure that it did. But to call it the anti-Andor, what are you even saying? GameSpot reports, Ahsoka review for Star Wars Rebel fans only. If you don't already care about Hera Syndulla and Sabine Wren, this show probably isn't for you. Now, I gotta say, I'm not a very big Rebels fan myself. I did watch the entire series one time through. There was a couple of episodes that I did watch more than once because of their relative importance moving forward in Star Wars. But to say that this show is for Rebels fans only... I'm not quite sure that I agree with that. However, it certainly does seem like a Rebel Season 5. I think it's fair criticism to say that Ahsoka needs to be more about Ahsoka and her story rather than the continuation of the Rebels storyline. And so far, it's certainly Rebel Season 5. Observer.com writes, Ahsoka Review, the most lifeless Star Wars installment yet. Rosario Dawson is an errant Jedi Knight searching for a missing hero before a new war can start. But this show is so plotting, it wouldn't be surprising to find out the actors and director had been replaced by artificial intelligence. When I see a review like that, I definitely want to go back and see how they reviewed other things. Because if you think this is slow, again to my previous point, what did you think about Andor? What did you think about the Book of Boba Fett? What did you think about Mandalorian Season 3? This show, to me, is better than the ones that I just mentioned. Better than Kenobi so far. The jury's still out. Definitely better than the Book of Boba Fett. And certainly better than everything we got in Mando Season 3. Because, in my opinion, that was the worst Star Wars live action we've gotten so far. Independent writes, Ahsoka Review, Disney's latest Star Wars outing is flat, flimsy, and devoid of life. Is it fair to say those things after two episodes? I just don't know. Respectfully, I disagree with it. I don't think that the show was all that flat. Was it a little slow? Yes. It In some parts, it was slow as Ahsoka actually running in the show because, as you can see, Rosario Dawson is very slow.
he. But to say that Ahsoka is devoid of life, isn't that a little early to prejudge it that way? You've only watched the first two episodes. Maybe it's slow and methodical on purpose. Maybe it's going to build up. It doesn't need to be at its peak right out of the gate. So with that being said, I think this is unjust criticism, in my opinion. Does that make me a Disney shill? Whatever. And this one right here really got my attention. Ahsoka Review, it's time to say goodbye to the Star Wars you knew. The newest entry in the galaxy far, far away is Ahsoka, which could use a little more of the franchise's signature simplicity, charm, and heart. Again, we've only seen two episodes. Now, do I agree with their overall premise? It's time to say goodbye to the Star Wars that we knew that we grew up with, George Lucas' Star Wars. 100% absolutely, I fully support that thought. It's never going to reach the peak of before, of yesteryear. That's over. Star Wars, no matter what Disney does, will never be what it used to be. But that doesn't mean that it can't again one day be good. And the problem with fandom right now is that just because Disney has it, what if they actually do give us a good show? So many people, so many fans, and even some of you guys watching are saying, it's crap because it's Disney. Forget you, coach. How could you rate it a seven? Well, I rate it a seven because I think it's a seven. And I don't care if the communist have it, Disney have it, or whoever has it. To me, this show was a seven so far. Collider writes, Ahsoka Review, more for the Star Wars diehards than casual fans. Rosario Dawson stars as Ahsoka Tano in Dave Filoni's live-action continuation of Star Wars Rebels. Slow, lifeless, prodding, but for the diehards? I just don't even see how those two things make sense. How can you reconcile that? And I hope that you see what we're looking at here. A lot of the criticism from the media and even the fans, they actually don't match up. Like, they just don't work together. Do I think that this show is specifically made for diehards? You have to be a Rebels fan to know what's going on? No, I don't. If you don't know who Hera Syndulla is before Star Wars Ahsoka Episode One, who the freak cares? What does that matter? This comes from scmp.com, Ahsoka Review. Disney Plus Star Wars' series is slow but promising. And that was my thinking. That's why I gave it a 7. Because I truly am kind of on the fence with it. I am hopeful that the show actually gets better, and, I, and I'm hoping next week I can move it to an 8. Maybe that won't happen. I'm definitely going to tell you and be honest about it. Maybe it goes back to a 5 or a 4. Who knows what's going to happen? But right now... I'm, I can't make the decision because I need to see more. So that's why right now, after two episodes, it's overall a seven for me. If it gets better, then great. But I think that they're right. The show so far is slow, but promising. The Escapist says Ahsoka is good, clean Star Wars. All of the people that have been hung up on leftist, woke politics, agenda, Disney messaging, and things like that, where is it in Ahsoka with the exception of having a, basically an all-female cast? Well, you know, you could use the Star Wars backstory to kind of justify why there are so many women right now in this show. You know, Kanan is dead. Ezra is out in the wherever he's at. And Zeb, I think, will probably show up at a later date. We do know that he is in this Mandoverse. But with the exception of the whole being led by basically a female cast, where is the messaging? Where is the agenda? This is good, clean Star Wars fun so far. And personally, after the first two episodes, I wasn't really bothered by how many women there were. It, it just hadn't bothered me yet. If it does, I'll let you know. DigitalTrends.com reports, Ahsoka Review, a Star Wars celebration of the old and new. That's how I see it. Especially when we get the Anakin Skywalker part where he's with Ahsoka in a flashback. What if we get an Anakin Skywalker Force ghost having a conversation with Ahsoka? What if he says, Ahsoka, I love you? I mean, there's so many connections that can be made. How are you going to be feeling if Luke Skywalker shows up and he and Ahsoka go on mission together and it's the same Luke that we got from Mando Chapter 16 and it's the same Ahsoka that we see doing her fighting? If they're together on screen fighting against an enemy, you're not going to like that? Okay. All right. We'll see. Variety reports. Star Wars Ahsoka is a transcendent experience for lifelong fans. Transcendent experience. So I guess Variety is all in. They're liking what they're seeing. Do you see the extremes that we're looking at here? The Hollywood Reporter ripped it to pieces. Variety comes out and they're all in. You know, is that shill media? No. I don't think it's shill coming from Variety. Whoever reviewed it really liked it. 
They say in the article how it's transcendent because they're taking a cartoon, an animated show, and they're making it live action, and it's good. It's the continuation of the Rebel story, and that's what they're saying is transcendent about it. And i got to be honest, I agree with them. I have to say that it's probably not easy for Dave Filoni to step in and take what he worked on for so long for years in Rebels and Clone Wars, and now to translate that over to live action. That's got to be tough. And the final one here from BlackGirlNerds.com review, Ahsoka, the best series so far from Disney Plus Star Wars Universe. And after the first two episodes, I can't disagree. I think these first two episodes of Ahsoka are actually better than the first two episodes of The Mandalorian. Definitely any of the other ones, Andor, Kenobi, Book of Boba Fett, what have you. Two episodes of Ahsoka so far is the best Star Wars live action that I have seen with my own eyes. Now, does that mean that Star Wars is on a return? Does that mean that Ahsoka and Dave Filoni is going to save the franchise? No, they're not even close to doing that. But if it gets a little better, don't let that make you bitter, guys. Maybe they're actually starting to listen to fans and do things you know, to service the fans. I know that's definitely wishful thinking for a lot of us, but only time will tell. Too many people, too many of you are assuming that you already know. And truth is, you don't. Neither do I, by the way. Please let me know in the comments what you think about this and where you stand. What article title do you agree with the most? And the only thing that I will say in addition to that is, if you haven't even watched the first episodes of Ahsoka because you've checked out, I mean... Your opinion on Ahsoka doesn't mean anything then. I mean, I hate to break it to you, but it doesn't. You can sit there and whine and complain about Disney all you want to, but that does no good. And many of you are going to call me a Disney shill now, which is laughable. I'm definitely not a fan of Disney at all. Definitely not a fan of Disney Star Wars at all. If it improves and gets better, I definitely want to be in a position where I can at least recognize that. Thank you guys for being here. Can't wait to read these comments. We are You Are Echo Base Network. See you on the next one.